Amid the unforgiving landscapes of the American Southwest, a tension simmers that will shape the destiny of two formidable tribes, the Apache and the Comanche, as resilient as the rugged terrains they command, stand at the edge of an epoch-defining conflict over land, resources, and cultural heritage. Here, where metal armor was a foreign concept, the power and efficacy of stone, bone, and wood decides fates. The Comanche, it is said, wielded these primitive tools with a mastery that often outshone their Apache rivals, tracing their roots to a complex web of traditions, survival skills, and fiercely defended territories. These tribes represent the epitome of pre-colonial Native American military prowess. Prominent leaders like Geronimo for the Apache and Quana Parker for the Comanche left indelible marks, not just on their tribes, but on American history as a whole. But what made one tribe seemingly more adept at harnessing the limited resources of their environment? Was it simply a question of ingenuity? Or did external forces play an unexpected role in shaping the outcome of this age-old rivalry? Join us as we explore the dramatic battles, strategies, and often overlooked kingmaker who would ultimately tip the scales in this enduring struggle between the Apache and the Comanche. Welcome to History on Fleet, epic showdown of the fierce rivals. All right, let's turn the clock back a bit and set the stage for this fierce rivalry. Amidst sprawling landscapes and the sounds of nature, the Apache reigned supreme. They weren't just living off the land, they were shaping it. As dominant as a mountain lion on its chosen terrain, the Apache held sway over territories that others could only dream of. But dominance, as history often reminds us, isn't eternal. Whispers of change blew with the winds from the north. The Comanche, once seen as mere shadows behind the great Apache, found themselves a game changer. The horse. This wasn't just an animal, it was a revolution on hooves. While other tribes might have simply used horses as a new mode of transportation, the Comanche saw them as extensions of themselves, allies in their quest for dominance. While the Apache stuck to traditional tactics, the Comanche revolutionized warfare with their newfound horse companions. Harnessing the power of these magnificent beasts, the Comanche evolved. They began to move differently, strike differently, and even think differently, using their horses for cover while shooting arrows with unmatched precision. The once underdogs rose to challenge the mighty Apache. Their rivalry with the Apache spanned over a century, marked by intense battles and deep-seated animosity. Names they used for each other like Esequita, Grey Excrement, and Indice, Enemy, spoke volumes of their mutual disdain. On open plains, the Comanche's horsemanship made them nearly invincible. However, the Apaches held the advantage in the mountains and hills, leveraging their knowledge of the rugged terrain to trap and counter the Comanches. If they could catch us in the open, we were done for, but usually we could lead them into canyons where we took what they had. A Chiricahua Apache recounted, the Comanche's ingenious rise to power. This leads us to wonder how the Comanche, newcomers to the Southern Great Plains, managed to oust the established Apache from their stronghold and establish the formidable Comancheria. Let's unravel this complex tapestry, thread by thread. Numbers and unity. The Comanche, unlike the Apache, wasn't riddled with fragmentation. Their unity was one of their core strengths. According to historian Charles L. Kenner, the Comanches showcased a degree of organization and discipline that the Apaches found hard to challenge. While the Apaches resided in isolated farming communities, the Comanches thrived as a cohesive unit making them a harder force to combat. Mastery of Horse Warfare Their relationship with the horse, as we discussed earlier, wasn't just utilitarian. It was transformative. It provided them with a speed, agility, and combat edge that caught many, especially the Apache, off guard. Territorial Expansion As Comanches expanded, their pressure on the Apache increased. Historically, the Apache had thrived on the plains as farmers. But once they were at war, those farms became a military liability. Whereas the nomadic Comanche had no farms or villages to attack, the Apache had to defend the places where they were rooted and which they counted on for food and shelter. By sweeping into Apache villages in the dark of night, destroying their food storages, killing their livestock, burning their homes, and quickly disappearing into the night, the Comanche wore down their competitors on the plains. Alliances The alliances the Comanches forged, especially with European powers, were strategic game-changers. 
While the Apaches struggled with access to European guns due to their geographical disposition and existing rivalries, the Comanches thrived. The Apaches were in a post-horse pre-gun phase due to the Comanche-Wichita-Cadao alliance that prevented them from accessing European gun suppliers in Louisiana. This made it relatively easy for the well-armed Comanches and their allies to continue pushing the Apaches southward. Raiding and slaving The Comanches' penchant for raiding was another factor in their ascendancy. They didn't just raid, they uprooted, ensuring that the Apache, or any rival for that matter, was left destabilized. Enslaving, especially women and children, further decimated the Apaches' numbers, while boosting Comanche strength. By 1740, the Comanches and Nortefios formed an alliance, further pushing the Apaches south. This alliance was mutually beneficial. The Comanches traded horses and captives for French guns and other European goods, while the Nortefios received a steady supply of horses and Apache, especially Lippin, captives to sell to the French. Following a practice that was widespread amongst indigenous people in the region, some of these slaves were sold on the thriving New Mexican slave markets, while others were adopted or married into families, and eventually became Comanches themselves. Tactics The Comanches were innovators on the battlefield. Their guerrilla-style ambushes, combined with large-scale frontal assaults, meant they were unpredictable and devastating. They were not just fighters, they were strategists. The influence of landscape on warfare. The terrain of Comancheria was tailor-made for Comanche-style warfare. Open plains were their playground, and here, the Apache, traditionally more adapted to rugged terrains, found themselves at a disadvantage. Each battle was a ripple in the fabric of history, marking the slow, steady shifts in power and dominance. With each successful raid, the Comanches grew stronger and the Apaches weaker, observed Jeffrey D. Carlyle betrayals, alliances, and a fight for survival. Now the conflict between the Comanches and the Apaches wasn't just about numbers or resources, it was deeply personal and riddled with vengeance. Their battles often resulted in significant losses for both tribes. Notable Comanche chiefs like Bajo El Sol and Yellow Wolf met their end in this prolonged feud, emphasizing the gravity of this conflict. The tipping point in this age-old rivalry can be tied back to a few pivotal events. A salient moment was the nine-day battle in 1723 between the Comanches and Apaches on the Rio de Fierro. The aftermath was grim and served as a stark reminder of the brutal realities of tribal warfare. Another significant incident highlighting the aggressive nature of the Comanches occurred when a smaller Comanche war party attacked a much larger Lipan group near Pecos Pueblo as they were on their way from Pecos to San Saba. This event took place in the year 1763. This might have been influenced by the Comanche's cultural emphasis on saving face and the obligations of the War Bonnet Society, whose members were required to fight to the death against overwhelming odds or face ostracization. As battles raged between the Apache and the Comanche, a new contender stepped onto the scene, the Spaniards. Their entrance signaled a time brimming with clever politics, strategic bonds, and shocking betrayals. Allegiances swayed and power teetered on a fragile balance. The Comanche's might was pushing the Apache to the brink. With land shrinking and resources dwindling, the Apache, desperate and cornered, looked to the Spanish for aid. They saw in them a beacon, a hope to counter the overwhelming Comanche advance. A notable moment from history shines through on a sweltering summer day in the mid-1700s in San Antonio, Texas. Four Apache leaders met Spanish missionaries, symbolically laying down their arms and seeking an alliance. The Apache plea was clear they needed Spanish protection against the Comanche tribe. But peace wasn't easily achieved. Not all Apache factions were on board, and they found themselves clashing with settlers, Mexicans, and later, Americans. The legend of Geronimo encapsulates this Apache resistance, defending their ancestral lands. Parallel to the Apache struggle, the Spanish were simultaneously navigating their relations with the Comanche. After years of mediation, Juan Bautista de Anza, the governor of New Mexico, sought to negotiate peace with several Comanche bands. But peace wasn't straightforward, with leaders like Toro Blanco posing obstacles. A breakthrough came when Toro Blanco met his end at the hands of those advocating peace. Come February 1786, Comanche chief Acuaracapa arrived in Santa Fe, finalizing an accord with Anza. This agreement saw the Comanches halting their raids, ensuring leaders communicated with the Spanish and cutting ties with foreign traders. The Spaniards, in return, opened their markets to the Comanches and promised unbiased trade oversight. One consequence of this alliance? 
a combined assault on the Lipan Apaches marking them as mutual adversaries. This pivotal shift in the Southern Plains brought a bittersweet outcome. While the Comanche and New Mexicans enjoyed relative calm from 1786 to 1821, the Lipan Apaches bore the brunt, retreating from the mighty Comanche-Spanish coalition. Despite the peace, the Comanche's conflict with Texas continued throughout the Spanish era. The 1785 Comanche-Texan Treaty had increased trade, but consistent Comanche raids kept the area on a constant war footing due to the province's officials' lack of funds to maintain a consistent Indian policy. In this historical tableau, the Apache and Comanche were the principal actors, with the Spanish as influential kingmakers. The once revered Apache tribe witnessed their decline, often making decisions out of sheer desperation. In contrast, the Comanche maneuvered through these political shifts, solidifying their place of dominance. Presently, several Apache groups dot the southwestern U.S., while most Comanches find their home in Oklahoma. Both remain fiercely protective of their vibrant cultural legacy, ensuring their forefathers' tales live on. This is History on Fleek, and we'll see you next time.